Elon Musk isn't one to shy away from attention, and his clash with woke culture took things up a notch, especially since it happened with his son Xavier right there. Rather than just throwing in a few witty remarks and moving on, Musk fully committed to the fight. He went all out, denouncing woke culture as if it were a personal mission. From criticizing cancel culture to describing wokeism as a mind virus, Musk left no doubt that he's in this for the long haul. Uh, your son is dead. So my son Xavier is dead. He's killed by the woke mind virus. Considering the situation with his son, it's clear why this struggle feels so personal to Musk. But it raises some big questions. What drove Musk to take on woke culture with such intensity? And what exactly happened to make things so complicated between him and his son? And freedom of speech, you have to say, when is it relevant? It's only relevant when someone you don't like can say something you don't like, or it has no meaning. And as soon as you sort of throw in the towel and concede to censorship, it is only a matter of time before someone censors you. Before Musk stepped in, Twitter was well known for its stringent moderation rules, with users frequently banned for expressing views that clashed with the woke agenda. Musk aimed to overhaul that. To him, the platform was a crucial front in the fight for free speech, and he was more than willing to disrupt the status quo. This was especially evident in his interview with Jordan Peterson, where he openly discussed how followers of woke culture are now attempting to deceive him. You know, I was told, oh, he, you know, Xavier might commit suicide if, if he that was a That was a lie right from the outset. Incredibly evil, and I agree with you that the people that have been promoting this should go to prison. So what is woke culture really? And why is it stirred up so much controversy? Originally, the term woke wasn't problematic at all. It referred to being socially conscious, acknowledging injustices like racism, sexism, and inequality, and striving to make a difference. However, as Elon pointed out during this interview, I don't know if this is necessarily sort of one candidate or another candidate, but it's I'm generally against things that are anti-meritocratic uh, or where there's an attempt to suppress discussion where ev even discussing a topic is, uh, you know, not allowed. The woke mind virus is communism rebranded. Like many movements, woke culture has shifted far from its original intentions. It transformed over time, and frankly, not in a positive direction. I think we need to be very cautious about any, anything that is anti-meritocratic um, and anything that is results in the suppression of free speech. Um, so. You know, those are two of the aspects of the work mind virus that I think are very dangerous. Nowadays, it seems to focus less on awareness and more on publicly shaming or canceling those who dare to hold differing views. Make a comment that doesn't fit the approved narrative, and suddenly you're branded with labels like racist or sexist, or whatever term woke culture has come up with that day. You can't, you can't question things. Uh, even the questioning is bad. You know, almost anonymous would be, would be cancel culture. And obviously people have tried to cancel you many times. There was a time when people could have real debates. Remember that? You could discuss different viewpoints, agree to disagree, and part ways without animosity. But those days seem to be a thing of the past. As Elon pointed out, questioning anything is now frowned upon. The moment you challenge the woke agenda, you're immediately painted as the villain. The media contributes heavily to this too. Just turn on the TV, it's everywhere. Movies, shows, and even ads have become platforms for pushing this woke narrative. It's no longer about telling compelling stories or offering quality products. Instead, they focus on checking diversity boxes and pushing an agenda that often feels more forced than genuine. Now, don't get me wrong. Diversity and inclusion are essential, but there's a way to do it without making it feel like it's being shoved down people's throats. That's where woke culture has lost its way. Like, like wokeness basically wants to make comedy illegal. <laughs> Which is not cool. We've experienced a bit of that. <laughs> but the real threat? It lies in how woke culture is silencing free speech, even in comedy. Cancel culture has become the ultimate expression of the woke movement, fueled by fear. People are now hesitant to speak their minds, afraid of being publicly shamed, or even losing their jobs over a single comment. Political correctness has taken over to such an extent that everyone is tiptoeing around, trying not to offend anyone. Musk refers to this as the woke mind virus, and he has a point. It's like a mental plague, making people afraid to be genuine or truthful. Rather than encouraging open conversation, woke culture is pushing people apart and creating echo chambers where only approved opinions are welcome. Well, I'm so thrilled you're here because, you know, we do a show where we talk about what 
important changes happen in the world. Elon Musk isn't just talking the talk when it comes to battling woke culture. He's walking the walk. Musk has been outspoken about what he dubs the woke mind virus, and he's not holding back. In his interviews and public remarks, he's repeatedly highlighted how woke ideology is suppressing free speech and stifling innovation. One of his most impactful moments came during a conversation with Jordan Peterson, where Musk discussed how woke culture has crept into every aspect of life, from the media and education systems to even family dynamics. He likened it to a virus that warps people's minds, making them feel morally superior while shutting down genuine dialogue. That wasn't the only time he made his stance crystal clear. Remember his interview with Bill Maher? Another moment that hit hard. Musk laid it all out there, saying that wokeism is censoring free speech and making people afraid to be honest. And honestly, who can argue with that? We've all seen it play out. One slip up on social media and someone's career could be over thanks to cancel culture. Musk sees this as more than just a personal concern. He views it as a threat to the foundation of an open functioning society. For him, free speech isn't just a luxury. It's crucial for fostering innovation and driving progress. It from both sides. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, <coughs> people, you and I are both like in that little group of people, maybe it's a bigger group now, yeah. who, who are called conservative. But Musk didn't just stick to discussing the issue. He took action. Buying Twitter wasn't just another business decision. It was a strategic move against the woke agenda. Once he took control of Twitter, now rebranded as X, he immediately started reshaping the company. His first priority? Reducing the workforce, particularly those employees linked to what he saw as the platform's progressive bias. Let's face it, Twitter's leanings were no secret before Musk stepped in. He wasn't there to keep the status quo. He was there to send a message, and he certainly did. So what do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comments below.